So all nuclear reactions lose mass. All nuclear reactions, therefore, have that mass converted into energy. That's why they give off so much energy. It is this lovely equation, which, you know, is like the hallmark of, like, geekiness and stuff like that, or smartness, or whatever. You see thrown around Einstein's lovely equation that E equals mc squared, right? And what this means, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. It turns out if mass is converted into energy, the amount of energy it's converted into is take that mass in kilograms times the speed of light squared. Now this is truthfully a physics equation. In physics, they use all SI units. And one of the big chemistry SI units we don't use is for mass. But mass has to be in kilograms. If you screw that up, you're going to screw up the whole calculation. So to use this equation, mass has to be in kilograms. <coughs> Anybody know what the speed of light is? Yeah, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. How fast is that? Very fast. It's fast enough to go around the Earth at the equator seven times in one second. It's fast enough to go to the moon and back in three seconds. It's fast. So the speed of light is a big number. So notice 3 times 10 to the 8th. That's 300 million meters per second. And you square it as part of the calculation. And so a little mass, by the time you multiply by that big number squared, turns into a huge amount of energy. So if we look, let's say I had, you know, one kilogram of like radioactive whatever, and I could completely convert it into energy. Not likely, but let's just say I could, you know, magically turn mass into energy. One kilogram of mass. turn into 9.0 times 10 to the 16th joules of energy. Joules of energy. I'm sure this is more than enough to power every home in Phoenix for quite a while. In just one kilogram of mass. Thank you. <coughs> so what Einstein figured out is that matter and energy are not two distinct things. They're just different manifestations of the same thing. And so they can be converted one into the other. This is what nuclear reactions do. They convert mass into energy. If you recall, we said that all nuclear reactions lose mass, all of them. If you take a nuclear reaction and you compare the masses of the products and the reactants, now if you compare the mass numbers, the mass numbers will always add up the same. But again, if I give you exact masses of all species, you can figure out that, oh, the products really do weigh a little bit less than the reactants. That difference in mass, you could convert it to kilograms and plug it in right here and figure out how much energy would be produced in that particular nuclear reaction. So that's the first manifestation of this equation, predicting how much energy might be given off an equation. But we usually take this discussion one other place. So nuclear binding energy. I'm going to talk about... The same equation, here I'm really going really to call it delta M, a difference in mass, which really I could have called it the same before we talk about chemical reactions. We call this delta M, the difference in mass, the mass defect, the mass defect. So if I told you this marker weighed 10 grams, 10 grams, and this marker weighed 10 grams, and I put them both together, and put them on a scale. What should the scale read? 20 grams. Sweet. Unfortunately, when we talk about the nucleus, it doesn't work that way. We know the exact mass of a proton, and we know the exact mass of a neutron. And so if I have a nucleus that has, say, you know, 10 protons and 10 neutrons, like neon, well, we know how much 10 protons should weigh. We know how much 10 neutrons should weigh. And if we add it all up, we figure that's, if I put a neon nucleus on the scale, that's what it would read. But it doesn't. The scale would always read less. A nucleus is always lighter than what made it. You got separate neutrons and protons, and you weigh all their masses, and you get a number. And you put them all together in a nucleus, and it doesn't give the same number anymore. 
it always gives something less. A nucleus. So if you look at a nucleus, what's the charge on a proton? Plus one. Plus one. And most nuclei have many protons. How do those protons feel about each other? They don't like each other, and yet they're willing to hang out together in the nucleus. Interesting. So protons don't like each other, and yet they're all together in the nucleus right next to each other. Hanging out. Big repulsive force, right? Between them. So why are they hanging out together? It turns out there must be a greater force that's holding them together. They call it the strong force, or the strong nuclear force. So, but the strong nuclear force, the energy that is applying that is called the nuclear binding energy. Nuclear binding energy. And the way it works is these protons and neutrons, they, they have a big, huge conference. And they're like, okay guys, we're going to form a nucleus, and uh, we got to decide how we're all going to get along, because we know you protons, we know you guys hate each other. So, got to have some neutrons to kind of buffer the situation, kind of put them in between the protons. That's why, you, you know, we talk about having one neutron for every proton. I like to think of the neutrons as kind of buffering the situation. So, but if they're all going to live harmoniously together in the same nucleus, got to have some sacrifices. Got to have some sacrifices. One of the neutrons says, you know what, I'll cut off my arm so we can all live together. That's my sacrifice. One of them says, I'll cut off my ear. Okay, they're pretty hardcore. <laughs> Obviously, protons and neutrons don't have arms or ears. But what they do is they sacrifice some of their mass. And they all say, if we're gonna, if we're gonna live together, we're gonna need some energy holding us together. You know what, let's all chip in a little bit of our mass. I'll lose a little bit of this, you lose a little bit of that, a little nip tuck, and we'll turn that mass into energy, and we'll use that energy to hold us all together. That is the nuclear binding energy. Because all the nucleons have contributed just a little bit of their mass, which turns into a whole lot of energy, the nucleus will always weigh just a little bit less than you expect. All separately, protons and neutrons have a bigger mass than when you mix them all together and form a nucleus, because they've all sacrificed a little of their mass to hold the nucleus together. Cool? They call this nuclear binding energy. So we know the exact mass of a proton. We know the exact mass of a neutron. If they gave us the atomic mass, we can throw in the electron as well. But if they give you the nuclear mass, it's just the mass of the nucleus, and we can compare, like if it has, say, again, 10 protons and 10 neutrons, we can figure out how much 10 protons would weigh by multiplying by 10. We can figure out how much 10 neutrons would weigh by multiplying by 10 and add it together. That's the expected mass. But then if I gave you the real mass, and the real mass would always be less. And you compare those two. You take the difference between those two. The expected mass and the less real mass. The difference between those two is the mass defect. So you get the difference between, again, the, the expected mass and the real mass, but you've got to convert it into kilograms to put it in this equation. Notice AMUs is analogous to grams per mole. So you've got to divide it by 1,000 to turn it into kilograms per mole before you plug it into this equation. So you take the difference between the expected mass and the real mass, the real mass would have to be provided, and plug it into this equation, after converting to kilograms, multiply by speed of light squared, and that gives you the nuclear binding energy, the energy that is holding that nucleus together. So now let's say for a minute, let's say I hired you, Steph, to do some babysitting. And I said, you know what, Steph, I'm gonna pay you $50 an hour. And then I hired Brianna, and I said, Brianna, I'm going to pay you $10 an hour. Who's getting the better deal? Yeah. Steph, 50 bucks an hour, right? Not really. Don't know who's getting the better deal, because what I didn't tell you is how many kids they're watching. <laughs> Brianna's watching one child. Steph is going to be watching 50 children. <laughs> Brianna's therefore getting $10 an hour per kid. One kid, 10 bucks an hour, great. Steph is getting $1 an hour per kid. So I would not watch 50 kids for 50 bucks an hour. It is not worth it. So it really wasn't a fair comparison until you realize, well, how many kids are you having to watch? <clears throat> Same thing with this nuclear binding energy. We've done this calculation. You find the mass defect, convert it to kilograms, plug it in here, get a nuclear binding energy. 
but I'm comparing apples and oranges. Because if I compare neon, how many protons and neutrons would neon 20 have in its nucleus? 10 protons, 10 neutrons, it'd have 20 total nucleons in its nucleus. If I compare that to like uranium, like uranium-235, uranium-235 has 235 protons and neutrons, 235 nucleons that it's trying to hold in its nucleus. And so, you know, neon's nuclear binding energy, its total is way less than uranium's, but neon has way less things to hold in its nucleus. And so what we usually do is we take this energy we calculate out, and we divide it by the number of nucleons. And again, the number of nucleons, a nucleon is either a proton or a neutron. So we're just dividing it by the mass number, the number of protons and neutrons combined. And this is usually what we compare different elements. So we can compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. How much energy per nucleon is holding this nucleus together? The higher this number is, the more stable that nucleus tends to be. The lower this number is, the less stable this nucleus tends to be. So we call this the nuclear binding energy per nucleon. It comes out in joules per nucleon. Joules per nucleon. So in the case of, say, neon 20, I'd find delta E and then divide by 20. In the case of uranium 235, case of uranium-235, I would find delta E and divide by 235. So uranium definitely has a bigger delta E. Way more nucleons, bigger delta E. But once I do it on this comparison, it turns out neon is more stable and has a higher nuclear binding energy per nucleon question. Can you just repeat what you said about the stability compared to that? So compared to what? Delta E over nucleons is bigger than it's more stable or less stable? Correct, correct. The bigger the nuclear binding energy per nucleon, the more stable. And so neon, notice, what do you know about uranium-235? Not so stable, right? Iran has invested like millions of dollars in a ton of centrifuges to get a lot of this stuff right here. This is what does nuclear fission. So not the most stable thing in the world. So pretty radioactive. Neon, not radioactive at all. Not neon 20 anyways. And so here, you'll find out if you do this calculation of delta E and divide it by the number of nucleons, for neon again dividing by 20, for uranium dividing by 235, you'll find out that neon's got a significantly higher nuclear binding energy per nucleon than uranium does. And hence it's more stable. Which element and which isotope has the highest nuclear binding energy per nucleon? Iron 56. Iron 56. We mentioned earlier, iron 56, most stable element, most stable nucleus, I should say. And it's ultimately because it has the highest nuclear binding energy per nucleon in existence. Cool. That's about all I'm going to say about nuclear binding energy. Oftentimes you'll get a question, and it says, which of the following has the highest nuclear binding energy? And they'll give you all the numbers, and you're like, oh gosh, this is terrible. And you say highest nuclear binding energy per nucleon. If I'm in a pinch and I have like 30 seconds left before the test is over, am I going to finish this calculation for a bunch of different nuclei? There's no way. And so I usually just pick the one that's closest to having a mass of 56. Suffice it so that it usually works.